Just a very quick thing this time because the Kindle Scribe has been updated a bit. And actually, there are also minor updates to the Kindle Paperwhite range as well. Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 Keys, which is ever, as always, is for writers and readers like you and me who use and who write on Macs and iPhones and iPads and occasionally maybe read on Kindles. Uh, do subscribe because, I mean, there's always so much to talk about except today, because today it's pretty quick. It's about a software update to the Kindle Scribe, the large scale Kindle that you can write on. And, and I, while I'm telling you that, since I'm kindling, is that, that is a word, is it a right verb? Uh, while I'm talking about Kindles, there are some small updates to other Kindle devices as well. The Kindle Scribe thing though, is not a big update, but if you were on the fence, really on the bubble about the Kindle Scribe in particular, maybe this will help your decision. So, first of all, Kindle Scribe has added subfolders. Previously, you could create uh, documents that they called notes in a notebook, and you could create folders to put them in, but that was it. I used my Scribe uh, extensively for about a month, and in that time, my library got filled with notebooks. And when I tried being organized and using folders, it got full of folders instead. Now, you could have, say, uh, one folder for, for your novel, and within that, one subfolder for your research notes, another one for a draft, uh, anything like that. So, and that update, this new update, comes to all users of the Kindle Scribe, because it's a software one. You might not get it straight away, as uh, these things, you know, they take time to roll out across the world, millions of devices and things, but you will get it. And as part of it, you'll also get uh, another new feature, which is another update to do with how you handle documents on a scribe. Now, if you're in a notebook, uh, if you're in a notebook that you're writing on the Kindle Scribe, you can tap to jump directly to a specific page. Uh, that's just the same as you can really when in a book you're reading on a Kindle, but I think this has got to be much more useful for us as writers. I mean, I do knit back and forth in the book once in a while, but I can really see us having, say, a notebook that's got a page or three of subject headings, and then we're off writing something, but we jump back and forth between what we're writing and the headings as we write. And, and speaking of writing, uh, the new Kindle Scribe update also adds more um, styles of pen, uh, types of strokes that you can write on or draw it. There are now altogether pencil, marker, and fountain pen brush types, as they're called, and each has uh, more thickness options, plus pressure sensitivity. You press down harder, you get a thicker line. You want it that if you press down hard enough, the ink splatters everywhere, but yeah, no, not even in the fountain pen version. Like I say, I don't think, well, that might make me be tempted, but generally I don't think any of this update is going to make you rush to buy a Kindle if you didn't already want one, but small changes do make a difference, and maybe this is the most key small difference. This update, it was the first software update released for the Kindle Scribe, but at the time Amazon released it, it also announced that there are going to be more of them throughout 2023. That's promising, I like that a lot. And, well, okay, this is all there is about the Kindle Scribe, right? So you could now definitely go off to write something, unless you want to hear a tiny thing, I mean, even smaller about the Kindle Paperwhite, and a very controlled rant about what happened when I returned my Kindle Scribe to Amazon. Uh, Paperwhite first, because this is tiny, and I don't know that I'd even have noticed the difference if I didn't really like my Kindle Paperwhite. Brace yourself for this. There are now some new colours. Instead of just black, you can get a denim-coloured Kindle Paperwhite. There is something peculiar there, isn't there? Denim-coloured paper white. Uh, plus, there's um, a type of green that's spelled A-G-A-V-E, which I believe is pronounced Agave. Not sure. Uh, one thing, though, about those colours, they're only available in the 16 gigabyte version of the Kindle Paperwhite. I have an 8 gigabyte one. It's the cheapest you can get, and for once, cheapest is fine. You're not compromising, it's fine. An 8 gigabyte Kindle holds a lot of books. And I figure any it doesn't hold that you've already bought, well, they're still up on your Amazon account and you can just tap on them and download them quite slowly, but you can download them as you need. You do not require 
more than eight gigabytes in the Kindle. Unless maybe if you're reading graphic novels, which I imagine take up more room because they're heavily illustrated by definition. I, I'm not actually convinced that Kindle is a brilliant device for reading graphic novels on, but since I don't tend to read them, well, what do I know? Well, I do actually know that the Kindle Paperwhite 8 gigabyte version costs £140 or $160, and the 16 gigabyte one costs £160 or $170. Prices vary on Amazon a lot, and there are all sorts of bundles, but overall, when I just looked up those prices, they're much closer than I remembered them being, especially in the States. Because in the States, on those prices, you're doubling the storage for another $10. I know you don't need 60. I might even be tempted by that, though. Okay. Um, notice, by the way, that those prices are what you pay if you don't allow Amazon to put ads on the screen of your Kindle. You can get it for cheaper if you do, but don't allow Amazon to put ads on the front screen of your Kindle. Every time you pick up a book and ad for something, um, also, just is just general advice with Kindles, if you don't happen to already know, if this is an option where you are, then look for the Kindle Paperwhite Kids Edition. Always. It's about the same price, it never includes ads, and it does always include a free case. Um, it does also come with a subscription to various Amazon Kids collections of books and things, so you need to remember to turn that off. But overall, it's economically the best way to buy a Kindle. Paperwhite. And actually, despite the updates to the scribe, I think the Paperwhite, yeah, I think the Paperwhite is still the best Kindle. My Kindle scribe cost me £330 here in the UK, and I didn't like it, so I returned it and got my money back. The end. I said in 58 Keys Review why I didn't happen to like it, and also, you know, it suits different people, it doesn't happen to suit me for various reasons. But I did also mention then that I don't actually like returning things. I mean, for a start, it doesn't, it doesn't feel very green to just ship things around, maybe unnecessarily. I mean, I mean, okay, certainly I would not have bought a Kindle scribe intending to then send it back. Like, you know, uh, buying a dress and returning it after a party, hoping the store doesn't notice the stain, a staple of some very good rom-coms. Um, but nonetheless, returning is an option if you don't want something after all, and I didn't want it after all. So, um, it's supposed to take four to five business days to return it to Amazon and get your refund. It took six weeks. For six weeks, I was checking my Amazon account over and over and seeing, no, haven't had it back yet, haven't had it back yet. Eventually, I phoned them, and they, I don't know, what do they do? Give their servers a cuff over the head? Because now the computers are saying, oh yeah, right, we got that Kindle Scribe, you sent it back, yeah, we got it five weeks ago. Do you really want your refund? Here's a thing though, here's a thing. There was a long point, actually during that call, which took quite a while, and obviously the weeks before it, where I, I was seriously fearing that the Scribe had been lost in transit somewhere, and that somehow this would mean I would be out £330. While I thought that, yeah, I did think that I'd rather I hadn't sent it back and I would at least have got the device, but actually, no. I, even then, I still didn't think that the Kindle Scribe was something I would use enough. I didn't think it was a goodbye yet. I didn't think it was a goodbye yet, so goodbye. I'm having that. Thanks. Um, it's not a goodbye for now for me. Um, after this year's Amazon uh, software updates are all complete, well, I'll definitely look again. And when there's a Kindle Scribe 2, you bet I'll look again. Also, I should say, since I last covered Kindle on 58 Keys, there have been many comments from people who love their Kindle Scribes. If it's right for you, it's not only really right, it's getting better and better. Isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful how things can be improved even after you've bought them? Technology, eh? Um, that's it for this edition of 58 Keys. Thank you very much for watching. Now take care of yourself. Write more. And I'll see you soon.